In this video, I'll be covering Objective 3 for the CSIS 1116B Final Assignment Project. In Objective 3, uh, the first step is to change the column headers in our grid view. So I'm going to select my grid view control. Make sure that it is the grid view control that I have selected here. So I just verify by the glyph there that I can see the name, the grid view name, uh, the control name displayed there. Click on the Smart Task menu. And from here, we'll choose Edit Columns. So when you get to Edit Columns, you have two groupings on the left. One is the Available Fields, and the second is the Selected Fields. So what you see in the Selected Fields group is the list of fields that will be displayed in the grid view. So as we select each of these fields, we can go to the properties then for that field and make changes to it. So for the appearance grouping here on the right, we can change the header ID to read customer space ID instead of how it was before without the space. And then the same thing for company name. We'll just go ahead and put a space in there. And the same for contact name. The uh, phone column header is phone, and our fax column header is fax, so we can leave those the same. Now, we don't want to have the address field displayed in the grid view. We'll just display that when we um, link the grid view to our form view. What we'll have is the ability to basically see an index of all of our customers in the grid view, and then you can select a, uh, a customer from the grid view so that you can see the details of that customer in a, in a separate form view. So what we're going to do is just get rid of the address field. I'll highlight it and then click the little X button there to delete it. Highlight city, delete it. Region, deleted. Postal code, delete it. And country, delete it. So now we should just have customer ID, company name, contact name, contact title, and phone and fax. And it looks like maybe we didn't change. No, we didn't. The contact titles header text there, so I'm going to put a space in it. Just making it more human readable. Right? I'm not going to have the exact field names there anymore. So we'll go ahead and click OK to accept those changes, and then let's preview it by pressing Function Key 5 on the keyboard. And now you can see... Okay, i got to move that into view there, don't I? So now you can see there is our uh, grid view. Uh, has all of the appropriate names there for the headers, and then... Uh, we are limiting the amount of information now that's being displayed in the grid view, uh, both to 20 records, which we did in the first step, the first or the second objective actually, and now in the uh, third objective, we've limited the actual columns of information that are being displayed here. So then the next thing that we need to do is we need to go into this customer ID column and set it up so that when the user clicks on it, they will be able to go and see or be. Uh, presented with a, a form view that will have all of the details for that particular record. So if we want to make a change then to the uh, values that are being displayed for a particular column, we'll go into the grid view and the smart task menu and then choose the option edit column just like we did a moment ago. So actually, before we go in here, let's take a look at the structure of the code, the way it exists right now. So over here in Code View now, notice that the Customer ID field and all of the fields are organized into a Columns element inside of the Grid View element. In, inside of the Columns element, then, is each of our ASP.NET bound field controls. And so what those server controls do is just simply link to each of the various columns in the table for display of the values. And so you can see right here that they have a data field property, and that's how they assign the actual field names. In order to do what we would like to do, we're going to need to add a hyperlink in here to our customer ID field. So that means we actually need to modify the current structure of the field that we have here. Instead of using a bound field control, we're actually going to create a template and in that template we'll be able to add in there a hyperlink and then 
do the rest of the coding that's necessary to make the link to call the new form and, and pass the query to it. So to do that, we need to be back here in our edit columns. We select the column that we want to modify. And as I said, again, you know, we won't be able to use the existing properties over here because these properties are all related to that bound field server control. So we're actually going to make a change to the way that that's structured. So I'm selecting in the selected fields column the column that I want to modify. And in this case, it's the customer ID field. And then I'm going to click on this link here underneath of the properties. You'll see it reads convert this field into a template field. So that's what we'd like to have happen here. So that's what I'm going to do. Click on that choice. You'll see that the icon changes here in the list of selected fields. And we lose all of the properties. So watch what happens now in the code when I click OK. You'll see now we have in place of the bound field, we have a template field. Inside of the template field, two templates have been created for us. One is the edit item template, and the other is the item template. So if we did have a need to be able to modify the data in the table, then we would require to have, you know, use this uh, edit item template. We are not going to be doing any modification, so we're going to delete that template. All we need to do is be able to display uh, the value the way that we would like to have it displayed. And so the item template is just kind of like the read-only template. So that just displays the value for us. And you'll see that inside of that item template, we have a label server control. And it has in its text property been bound, using the bind method here, to the customer ID field. So what we need to do is we need to change that now from a label to a hyperlink. So let's do a couple of things here. I'm going to press enter after my opening item, item template element there. Give me some space. Also, I'll just I'll comment this out for the moment. The label, we don't want that value to be displayed, uh, but I just want to remind myself, uh, you know, the, the actual name of the field here as I'm editing this hyperlink that I'm going to add. So that's the next step then is to go to the toolbox, grab a hyperlink control, drop it into that open space there, and then we need to add a navigate URL property in here. And then in the navigate URL value, we're going to need to put in a eval method that will actually um, create a string that will include the value from the field. So because we're going to put in string values in here, that means that we're going to be using double quotes when we create the string. So I actually need to have the value for navigate URL be single quotes because inside of that I know I'm going to end up adding some double quotes. So now that we have that set up, we can go ahead and add in here a server-side reference to the eval method. And what we're going to do is indicate that we want the eval methods field, so in double quotes, customer ID. We want that to be placed inside of this string now that we're going to type in. So that's going to read customer details dot ASPX. So that's the name of the page that when the user clicks on the link that we want to have loaded up into or returned back to the web browser. But also we want to pass now the value and well, we're just creating a variable here. We, you could call it anything that you want as long as this variable name that I'm creating here, CID, will be the same variable that we use in the form when we refer to the form, um, the query string that the form needs to process. So that's just being generated on the fly here, that variable name, and then CID, and we're going to make that equal to now what we call a placeholder. So a placeholder is a set of curly braces, and then the instance of the variable that we want to have, which in this case we're only going to have one variable, and so it's uh, basically like a zero-based array, <coughs> meaning that the first variable will be re represented by the number zero. So here we're saying we're identifying the page that needs to be loaded, course details and that page which is going to be our web form is going to then receive the value of customer ID 
And then in the web form, we'll have it look up customer ID and then display the values, all the values for that particular record. So to end this process, we just need to uh, complete the string there and then go ahead and close up the eval method. And then we should be ready to go. Actually, now that I think about it, we're not ready to go because we have the navigation. In other words, when the user clicks on the link, but they actually would not see anything at this point because we haven't really assigned a text value. In fact, you see when I refresh the design view, how it just says hyperlink here. Uh, we do want to put in a text value for the hyperlink, just like we saw previously for the label. And then just go ahead and add the server-side code here that binds it to the customer ID field. And again, we need to be in double quotes in here, so we really need to have single quotes on the outside. So customer ID like that. didn't get my server size. So basically anytime you do angle bracket um, percentage sign, that's the same thing if you'd written this code in the code behind file. So we're just doing it directly in the web form just because that kind of simplifies the process at the moment um, instead of doing it the, uh, the code behind way. Okay, so that's the correct syntax now. So uh, we've got a text property. We change the quoting on it. It's the, the value for the text property is inside of single quotes because in there now we have this server code that is referencing or binding the customer field in our customer, the customer ID field in the customer table. So that's going to be the value that gets displayed for the text. And then when the user clicks on that text, then the navigate URL kicks in where we call this page and then pass it the value of customer ID. So now we can see it is correct because it shows data bound there in that column. Let's save our work. Let's do an F5 here. Load that page. And then once it's loaded, you'll see now we have hyperlinks here. And we don't have the page built to, to link to anything yet. But if you look at the status bar in the lower left-hand corner, as I rest my mouse over each one of these items, you can see that they are indeed hyperlinks. In fact, you can even see the underline appearing there, also indicating they're hyperlinks. But, but if you look at the status uh, bar at the very bottom, notice there is the path. So in other words, we're calling the customer details page, and then the actual value See how the value changes for the CID as I move my mouse to each of the different items here. So that's what makes the linkage to the form. So then in Objective 4, then, you'll be creating the form.